I guess one last thing is we can... Uh... We can go to that clinic place, grab a couple med kits before our next mission. Hello? Maximum law. Overhead, a gigantic holo sign shines like a street light, searchlight, screaming its message through the dim light. It hums and flickers, sputtering like an old engine. Fierce electrical crackles sporadically burst out of the sign's emitter, stabbing your eyes and filling your ears with static. Under the baleful glare of the sign, the rusty mini barge's deck is stacked with electronics. Dilapidated stereo share space with crisply boxed speakers. Ranks of discs and memory chips fill display cases padlocked under plexiglass. A short human in his late 20s stands in the middle, hands on his hips, talking loudly into the air. Bulky virtual reality goggles cover his eyes. A data jack cable runs from his temple, down a stained t-shirt to a belt load of clearly home-built computer hardware. No, I'm telling you. Nobody uses KM3s. Like, nobody. They're shit. I don't care what Deng says. If Shy Waste SRP uses KM3s, they're stupid. Hey, flesh is rolling up. I gotta go. He turns to face you, goggles blank and enigmatic. Blinking with tiny lights and wrapped in duct tape, he points at your PDA. I ripped that PDA. You work for kindly. His lips work impatiently. Yo, what do you want? You provided this PDA? Tell me about it. It was a Fuchi Azura Star 3. They use a scarab chick, which is good, but the motherboard is wet noodles and sprouts. I pulled up the trackers and installed encryption. Now it runs on the Wampoa virtual network. The corpse and cops can't crack it, can't track it. Well, thanks for the PDA. It's what we do. This is Law's Technology Palace, a satellite territory of Wampa. You step on the boat, you're in a sovereign state. I represent Wampoa here. I'm Maximum Law. He draws himself up proudly, setting his hands on his hips. The Maximum Law, yo. You got a tech problem? Boom, I solve it. You need software? Boom, done. But don't waste my time. So you got any business in Wampoa right now? If not, keep moving. Looks like you've got dangerously exposed wires over there. Yo, what are you, my mother? Law regards you with skeptical disgust. Those wires are fine when they are high and dry. They're only a problem for someone who does something stupid. I'm running a high bandwidth tech operation. Do I look like I have time to tape copper and sip tea? No, I don't. Law wraps his knuckles fiercely on a clear-topped case full of buses, cables, and cable harnesses. These are the only wires you need to think about. I'm here for tech. Show me what you got. What armor do you have? Outfits? There you go. Cargo carrier. See you later. Yeah, whatever. Don't mess with the law. Law is techno palace. There's the sign. Go visit this doctor. You again, I thought I told you to fuck off. Kindly will vouch for me. Yeah, you just idle your engine there for a minute and I'll check on that. There's a long silence on the intercom. The door gives several heavy metallic clicks. There's a dull rumble like heavy bolts sliding back. A green light flashes on the terminal. The door appears to be unlocked. You can enter the clinic. Chrome Alley. Ooh, examine the lobby. This electro furnace room has been built out as a medical clinic and a machine shop. The air is alive with the rumble of the furnaces and the hum of cooling fans. It is sweltering. The front area is more like a homey coffee house than a clinic lobby. Comfortable old furniture, used digipads, coloring books. The wall opposite the boilers is cluttered with a mixture of photos and prints, local artists' works, images of military vehicles, off-road racing, Rube Goldberg machines, personal photos, old-time Chicago gangsters, the Desert Wars Motorized Combat Division. Glance around the clinic space. The work area looks more like a machine shop than a medical theater. A roboticized operating table and a hydraulic lift supporting a partly disassembled V8 engine occupy places of equal importance against the north and south walls. Prosthetic limbs are racked overhead like machine parts. A heavy lift hoist is clamped onto an I-beam. An impressive home-built computer sits against the far wall. Several bulkier towers sit under the desk fans whirring. It looks more like a sysadmin's Decker server station than a doctor's terminal. The floors are scuffed concrete, stained with grease and old blood. The faint odors of ammonia, gasoline, and antiseptic mingle, mingle in the air. A large sign on the back wall reads, Sanitary space, no spinning. Personal photos? The pictures are mostly of Huey residents, holidays and parties. Ten armed Ambroses in many of them. I don't know who the fuck that is. 
The vast scope of photos suggests that Ambrose must be acquainted with almost everyone in Hioi. Look away. Are you Ambrose? Ten-armed Ambrose, yep. <laughs> this clinic looks like it just hosted a party. Spindly mechanical arms swing from unobtrusive wall mounts. Pulling down crepe paper ribbons and scooping food platters and empty beer bottles into biohazard bags. A severely crippled Caucasian man sits in a wheelchair amidst the maelstrom of mess and robotics. He's in his 40s, thick beard, tungsten earrings, beer belly, one cyber eye. Both his legs are missing, one at the hip and the other at the knee. He has only one arm and only three fingers remain on his surviving hand. His face and arm show the scars of reconstructive surgery. He grins wildly at you, regarding you with bloodshot eyes. He's clearly hung over. Hey, I'm Ambrose. He shouts cheerfully in English, his words piling together in a loose Midwestern accent. They call me Ten Arms. Welcome to the Kong, fellow UCASian. He chuckles, his chest shaking with mirth. A Waldo arm springs to life and swings over to him. Its medicine metal pincer momentarily sets a cigarette between his lips, just long enough for him to inhale from it. Kindly says you're all right. What can I do for you? Your front door could stop a bulldozer. Are you kidding? Have you any idea how much all the stuff in here is worth? This is a high capital operation, and life's dangerous for a guy missing most of his members, tooling up smugglers and criminals. Let me tell you what, though. Someone busts in here, they're going to be in a world of hurt. Ambrose chuckles evilly. There's a lot more than pipes and wires up in the fall ceiling. I've got Kindly's crew and the Club 88 doors on the panic button. They know which side their bread is chromed on. What, you thinking of trying to knock me over? He laughs uproariously, but it's not clear that he's kidding. You're a doctor? Sure I am. I'm a rigger, a rigger doctor, a rockter. Ambrose bursts into laughter, then stops and clutches his head. Oh man, I cannot laugh hard today. Too much partying last night, it hurts. I'm not board certified, but don't worry, I should be. I'm full on skill. My work's yellow lotus guaranteed and precisely in accordance with World Medical Association standards. Everybody in Huey comes to me, because I'm the only option. Very well, Rockter. Right on. Let's get you tricked out, unless you just want bullshit. Which I'm down for, too. What do you do here? What do I do? Tune-ups and engine rebuilds on your ass. I do it all. First aid, second aid, surgery, cybernetics, obstetrics, euthanasia. I'm your one-stop shop for health and beauty. Well, maybe not beauty. What sort of mechanical services do you offer? Oh, nothing you'd be interested. Right now, I'm mostly doing engine mechanics and electrician stuff. I send maximum law and reliable Matthew any work they can handle. It's really just a hobby in service of the community. I make my nut with the clinic. He looks fondly over at a massive, partially assembled V8 engine occupying part of the operating theater. That baby's going to be a goddess when I'm done with her. Uh, can you install me with combat wear? You know it. You got the coin in the essence. I'll trick you out like a bulldozer with ground effects and a turret. I've got it all. Bionic limbs, wired reflexes, decker wear, blood filters, synthetic muscle, bone lacing, greased bearings, ground effects, tight bolts. The full range of chrome alley services is something that we like to keep beneath the HK, HKPF's radar, Ambrose Winks. I don't modify myself. Any reason I'd come around here if not for medical gear? Shoot, this is a friendly little neighborhood. I love when people come by and bullshit. Hell, I host birthdays. Ambrose's spider drone swings a bottle of coffee liquor over to his nose. He sniffs it gingerly. Nope, that's no good anymore. Full of spit and ginger uh, cigarette ash. Show me your services. Sure thing, tune up for spare parts. Medical supplies. It's got a trauma kit. And a couple basic med kits. Confirm. Uh, we don't need the drugs. Just rearrange everything here. There we go. Confirm. Come back to the garage soon. Goodbye, Ambrose. Cheers, Stubtoe Williams. Got to get back to the boat, see what kind of missions we got. Which way is my boat? It's over here. The fuck is this? Oh, the guy in the basement. Hello? It's oppressively hot down here, and the air is full of synthetic ogres that grab you by the sinuses and refuse to let go. You can smell engine grease and melting plastic, ionized air and lead solder. A quick scan of the room tells you why. The downstairs tenant has converted this space into a machine shop. Metal fabrication tools and duraplastic extruders line the walls, and a pair of heavy industrial manipulators hang from the ceiling. 
A man in a black trench coat stands with his back to you, staring at a monitor mounted above a sturdy workbench. He addresses you without turning. I was wondering when I'd meet the new neighbor. His voice is pleasant, cultured. There's a hint of Russian accent here, but it's buried under layers of nuance. Please stay where you are. I'll be with you in just a moment. And unless you fancy an unplanned trip to Chrome Alley, don't touch anything. There are all manner of tools in here that could take your hand clean off. Ah, uh, thanks for the warning. Don't mention it. I have no interest in seeing anyone hurt in my shop, especially not my upstairs neighbor. Examine the robotic arms mounted on the ceiling. You focus on the enormous manipulator arms that you saw earlier. They're bulky industrial things, dented from years of heavy use. Each arm has been fitted with at least a dozen different welders, soldering guns, extruders, and metal fabrication tools. You've seen machinery like this in factories before, but they look terribly out of place in the bolt holes cramped engine room. Very good, yes, that's coming along nicely. Very nicely indeed. He turns towards you smiling, and for the first time you can see his face. He's broadly handsome, slavic features and a chiseled jaw. His eyes are like flecks of ice. So sorry to have kept you waiting, Mr... Oh, we'll tell the truth. Phineas Irk, good to meet you. And you as well. Now tell me, what can I do for... His voice trails off as a flash of motion catches his eye. With alarming speed, a sinister-looking drone scuttles out from under the work table. Its movements are surprisingly agile and fluid. The machine rears back menacingly, spreading its forelegs in a clear sign of aggression. The man's smile tilts and his tone goes apologetic. Please don't mind the drone. He can be territorial. But so long as you remain civil, civil he'll not bite. He extends a hand. Simultaneously, the drone relaxes into a neutral position, lowering its killing legs. Ractor, my mechanical counterpart here is called Kishoi. A pleasure. His hand is rough and abnormally warm to touch. He shakes your hand with a solid grip. I'm very pleased to meet you, my friend. In a community such as Yoi, it's important to be on good terms with one neighbors. Uh, I have some questions. He glances at the bracer on his forearm. A technical display winks to life, then gutters out. Very well. This morning's casting should still be cooling for a few minutes yet. That's time enough to talk. Uh, what did you mean by casting? Exactly what I said. A casting that I made for a new locomotive assembly for Kishoi. He gestures at the display above the work table. A biomimetic bio design, as you can see. This one is inspired by the walking legs of a decapod crustacean. The mangrove crab, to be specific. You're designing drone parts? And fabricating them, yes. Wouldn't it be simpler to outsource the fabrication? Simpler, yes, but not better. Here I have ultimate control over the entire process from start to finish. And I had the skills to make good use of that control. Drone architecture was once my profession, you see. Now that I've freed myself from the shackles of corporate servitude, I see little reason to rely on outsiders for much of anything. Are you Russian? I thought I caught a hit of an accent there. You have a good ear, I'm impressed. Yes, I grew up in Nitsi Novgorod, went to school there, started my career there in the industrial sector. A fairly common story, I'm sure. But I have also traveled a great deal, and in so doing, I have absorbed a number of other languages and dialects. How many do you speak? Counting Russian and Cantonese? Fifteen? He shrugs apologetically. It shames me to admit that I'm only literate in twelve. Oh. That's still impressive. Perhaps, when compared to the common man. But I've known a great many polyglots who can, and do, put me to shame. He gives you another half shrug, and Kashoi mirrors the gesture. Arabic has been a particular bugbear of mine. The unfamiliar characters and lack of vowels make it damn tricky to get a handle on. But I suppose that all men have their limits. It's very interesting machinery. The same could be said of many in Hiyoi, I'm sure. This is a smuggler's den, is it not? Our entire economy is based on people having things that they shouldn't. Is there a particular device that interests you out of curiosity? Uh, the robotic arms interest me. Good guess. That's precisely what they are. They fell off a boat, you might say. They weren't cheap, but I acquired them and had them mounted to the walls of my shop. I simply had to have them. The return on investment has been dramatic. Yes, they're cruder by far than the, well, the Waldo devices that I used in my professional life, but they still do the job, and they are mine. He gazes lovingly at the industrial arms, still smiling. They have increased my fabrication capabilities nearly tenfold, and that, to me, is worth any price. Your robot's got a wacky name. I suppose that it is. Not many riggers would name their most prized possessions after a villain from the fairy tale. A nod to my heritage, I suppose. I am too stupid. A thoroughly unpleasant person. Koshoi was the deathless, he was called, and good, for good reason. His soul was cleverly hidden outside of his body, and he could not be killed so long as it remained intact. Koshoi was a villain and a notorious kidnapper of women, but something about him always stuck with me. I suppose it was the notion of immortality through cleverness that resonated. There was something to be learned from that, I was sure. And so, when it came time to name my beloved creation, he was the first name that came to mind. And is your drone deathless? 
In a manner of speaking, I suppose that he is. I have redundant copies of every piece of his architecture, and his core programming is stored on a disk in a secret location. Should he ever suffer critical damage, I can easily bring him back. I had a plan once to automate the self-repair process. I must confess, it was really quite ingenious, but alas, my research was lost. One day I'll reclaim it, and Kishoi will become as deathless as the stories claim. But it will not be today. Uh, who'd you used to work for? That is something of a sore subject. My departure was involuntary, you see. I did not part ways with my employer under the very best of terms. I will tell you that I worked for the Grishin Avacor, but you'll forgive me if I don't want to go into detail. How do you pay for all this shit? Freelance. At the risk of sounding immodest, I've commodified myself rather well. There are always corporations in need of design consultations. You'd be surprised by how lucrative such work can be. And there is always other work that I can turn to in a pinch. You said you did other work? A rather personal question, wouldn't you say? Uh, maybe, but we're having a personal conversation. Indeed we are, but even in personal conversation, certain topics can be held off limits. Truth be told, I don't feel especially comfortable discussing my side work with relative strangers. Suffice it to say that my freelance activities often fall on the illicit end of the spectrum. I'll drop the subject. Perhaps. He glances at the display in his bracer again. Now will there be anything else? I'll get back upstairs. Very well, come back any time. It's pleasant to have someone to talk to. What do we got for jobs? Your workstation mission computer. The cool blue tones of the workstation's main menu fill the screen. A blinking message in the upper right corner notifies you of 600 messages. Ooh, new messages. Welcome to Hioi. From Kindly Cheng to Stubtill Williams. Stubtill Williams, on behalf of your friends at the Hioi Chamber of Commerce and the Swift Hands Madadong Parlor, I welcome you to the community of Hioi and to our new business venture. I've already lined up three jobs for you. The details of each are contained in a separate computer message. Remember to check your messages often as I will update you with new opportunities as they occur. Mission computer. Hey, Stubtail Williams. I've set up your mission computer to automatically collect and collate news reports, information, and media that might be of interest to you. Some of the keywords I've got it trolling for are words like Raymond, Duncan, Walled City, etc. I've also patched in a permanent link up to the Hong Kong shard of the Shadowlands BBS. It's a great place to connect with other runners, sell pay data, get news from the street, and so on. Don't be shy about taking a look. Resources. From, that must be Strangler Bao. I have been instructed to inform you the various suppliers present in Hioi. Auntie Cheng has cultivated a commercial district of well-stocked and trustworthy vendors. Whoever you choose to do business with, you'll be in good hands. Ermine Kafai Club 88 is an excellent resource for acquiring additional weapons should you require any. If you're in need of magical supplies, go to the Parlor of Five Phases. If you desire training in the path of the Adept, seek out Spider Shen. She can help you, as well as supply you with any close quarters weapons you might desire. Chrome Alley can supply you with cybernetic enhancements and medical supplies. The proprietor, Tenar Bambros, is a cyber surgeon of some repute. Laws Techno Palace is a Wampoan run supplier of the local decking community. The place is hard to miss. Just look for a sign glowing in the sky. If you need drones, Reliable Matthews Robot Bazaar is your best bet, and I pity you. Well, he's a beautiful man. Best of luck in the shadows. As fresh meat, you're likely to need it. Serial killer? I've got a problem, Stubtill Williams, and you're going to help me solve it. I do a lot of business with the Wampoans. If you're not familiar with the term, I'll forgive you. You are an outsider, after all. The Wampoans are a tribe of techno-fetishists and deckers who've taken up residence in the Wampoa Garden area of Hong Kong. They make and trade high-tech goods to people from all over the world. A lot of Nguyen passes through their pasty little fingers, and I make a lot of money brokering deals between them and the smugglers here in Hioi. I've hit a snag, though. The Wampoan elders, their council of leaders, are being eliminated by a serial killer. They've asked me to dispatch someone to get to the bottom of it and stop the killings. And they're not taking their goods through my turf until I do. So you're going to be my proxy, dear. I don't care how you do it, but I need those murders stopped. The Wampoans have a delicate here in Hiwai by the name of Maximum Law. Speak with him if you wish to know about Wampoa. He's got a big mouth, but he knows very little of importance. Don't expect much from that half-empty bottle of vinegar. Get your ass down to Wampoa Garden and talk to the elders. Lie, cheat, and steal if you have to. So long as they're convinced that there won't be any more murders. I want my cut back, and I want it soon. Take the run. Good, I'll tell the elders you're coming. They don't like outsiders, and they might shoot at you if I don't warn them that you'll be arriving. Back to root. Check for new messages. Artifact liberation. Welcome to the Shadow Stubtoe Williams. I've received a request from an archaeologist named Mr. Drake. He's interested in liberating certain artifacts from beneath a manor house located in Tai Po. I've attached a copy of the video message. Hello, Madam Cheng. I've heard that you're a woman who knows how to get things done, especially with regards to things that aren't legal in the strictest sense. 
That's exactly the kind of help I'm looking for. Whoops, fuck. Sure enough, we were only a few days into the excavation when we discovered a series of tombs lying beneath the site. The scope of the tombs was far beyond anything Lou or I had expected. Several acres of catacombs at least, and untouched relics throughout. What's more, they're certainly older than the Song Dynasty. They may even be from a previous cycle of magic. Before I could make my report to the Free Enterprise Zone authorities, however, Lu called in his allies in Tan Tian Incorporated. Lu sold the entire site to Tan Tian, who then leased it back to him. Because Tan Tian is considered to have extraterritoriality in Hong Kong, local authorities were powerless to stop Lu from looting the tombs. He immediately began building a museum, if you can call it that, atop the site. He had the gall to call his museum the Emperor's Tomb. Can you believe that? The odds of these being an actual emperor being buried there are basically nil, but he doesn't care. Anything to sell a few tickets. Lu has continued his excavations using Tan Tian contractors to expand the dig. What he didn't know is that I bugged his comm link before he fired me. Based on what I've heard, something strange is going on in the lower levels. Work has been disappearing. Only to be found dead several days later. Whatever is down there is too dangerous to be left in Lu's hands. Lu must have found my deadline tap, though. I stopped receiving any information three days ago. The last thing I heard him talking about were a pair of ancient texts that workers had discovered. Then he issued an order that further excavation should be halted until he can secure the subterranean areas. I'm betting those texts are the cause of whatever is killing the workers. I have quite a bit of experience with these kinds of dangerous excavations, but an operation of this scale is beyond me. I need a team that's tough enough to get in and survive, aren't afraid of making a mess, and who can get it with the books and whatever else they can carry. Beyond the two texts, I'm willing to pay very well for whatever other artifacts your team can liberate. The more valuable, the better. Don't worry, they'll be going to actual museums, not some rich playboy's mansion. I've got a second program in place that'll suppress Lou's security system. The team will have to be careful, though. There are only so many alarms I can suppress. Go beyond that number, and I'll scrub the mission. I've included a catalog of likely items to help the team appraise the most valuable ones. They don't need to be subtle. In fact, I'd prefer they make it look like a common robbery. Tell them to smash and grab what they can. Let me know when you can find a suitable group of Shadowrunners. We'll do it in a bit. Nice simple robbery. Do you think you can handle something that basic? I have faith in you. Maybe later. Uh, that's another mission. Da, 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 da. Shall I in BBS? Oh, that's going to take a while to dick around on the BBS. But we got to go track down a serial killer in Wampoa.